He knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. Okay, for this practice problem, we're going to look at some Diels-Alder's reactions. So this is a Diels-Alder uh, reaction in the forward direction, and then we're going to try to do a retro Diels-Alder as well. So if you're unfamiliar with this, go ahead and take a look at my tutorial on Diels-Alder uh, cycloadditions, and we're going to try to draw the correct product for this Diels-Alder, and then given the product of this Diels-Alder, try to draw the reactants, because it's very important to be able to think retrosynthetically in this manner. So give this a shot. Okay, so with Diels-Alder's reactions, uh, it's very important to understand that uh, we're always going to be reacting a diene and a, di uh, a dienophile. So here's our diene, meaning we have two uh, double bonds, and then a dienophile is something else that has at least one pi bond. And so typically that's going to be an alkene, but we can also have an alkyne dienophile. So the, the easy part about the Diels-Alder is that the mechanism is always the same we're always going to create a six-membered ring between the four carbons that are, the, are, that are, are participating in the double bonds in the diene and then the two carbons that are participating in the pi bond in the dienophile that is involved in the reaction. So we're going to uh, push these pi bonds around, okay, and we are going to create a six-membered ring. So here are the two new sigma bonds. In a Diels-Alder, we're always going to create two new sigma bonds and one new pi bond. So, once again, it, it uh, doesn't matter which way we cyclize these because they're, they're actually not moving in one direction or another. It's a concerted reaction. But this pi bond has gone here. So that's this new pi bond right there. And then this pi bond has become this sigma bond. And this pi bond has become this sigma bond. But the interesting thing about using an alkyne as a, as a dienophile in a Diels-Alder is that we're only utilizing one of these pi bonds. The other pi bond is going to remain intact. And so that's why we still see a pi bond right there. If this had been an alkene, like normal, we would not see that pi bond there. And that would be our, our uh, we'd have a product uh, w w without that pi bond there. But since it was an alkyne, we do have an additional pi bond. These are now sp2 trigonal planar, so those methyls are flat and in plane. So that's the correct Diels-Alder product for that reaction. Now over here we wanted to go retrosynthetically. It's very important to be able to look at a product and see the reactants that, they, that it might have come from. And so if, if in Diels-Alder we always make a six-membered ring, if we're doing retro Diels-Alder we always break a six-membered ring. And what we need to be able to do is identify the six-membered ring and then see that since this pi bond is here, right, remember we're always getting a pi bond, then it must be these two sigma bonds that we break and therefore pull apart. And so what we can do is to even uh, do retroactive uh, electron pushing arrows, right? Why don't we make arrows that undo what we did, okay? And so what we get here is this sigma bond, not literally because this isn't a reaction in the forward direction, but just for our own bookkeeping, we can put this sigma bond down here to generate that pi bond. This sigma bond will break and make a pi bond there and make a pi bond there. And so what we're understanding is that this carbon here, this was not participating in the Diels-Alder reaction, but it was part of the diene because the diene must have been this five-membered ring, right? So because if we're breaking these bonds right there, boom, boom, and then pulling, pulling those fragments apart. After we're done shuffling the pi electrons, we must have pi bonds there and there to create the diene. And then on the dienophile, we must have had a pi bond there. And in terms of stereochemistry, because these were cis to one another on the product, we must have had a cis or a z-alkene as opposed to E. If this had been one dash and one wedge, we would know that it would be an E-alkene instead as the dienophile. So uh, this is the correct product for this Diels-Alder, and these are the correct reactants for that Diels-Alder product. Thanks for watching guys, subscribe to my channel for more tutorials, and as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.